Welcome to Talk of the Town, everyone, and welcome fall. What a beautiful time of year to get lost in a corn maze. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're going to visit a place where you'll really get back to basics. And we run away to join the circus. <laughs> we're gonna bake up some delicious hot pretzels, too. And it's also time for the grape harvest, so that's where we start. On a quiet mountainside just outside of Stroudsburg, a vineyard flourishes and the wine attracts tasters from all over. Linda and Randy Rice started small with 70 baby grape vines growing on their split rail fence. The climate was just about perfect and Mountain View Vineyard and Winery has been pouring vino ever since. We opened our doors um, September 1st of 2009. It took six years to actually have enough grapes in production and um, some wine made in order to open our doors. And from there, we've just grown like crazy. We have um, 2,000 vines, approximately 2,000 vines, and that will produce about 10,000 bottles a year. Well, you can't make the wine until you pick the grapes. And it usually takes 35 people an entire day to harvest all these grapes. So Marie, we better get busy. Well, actually, you smell the vineyard before you actually see it as you come up the mountain. The largest part of the vineyard is uh, planted with chamberson grapes. And the chamberson is the top red grape or the premier red grape of the Lehigh Valley Appalachian. It can be used to make uh, from a dry red to a sweet red and everywhere in between. It's so beautiful up here. The grapes, they look like you can just take them off the vine and eat them right now. Mmm. <laughs> in this section, we have the Cynthiana grape. It's sometimes called Norton. We use that in one of our, as a blender in one of our wines. It has a nice little peppery finish. Mmm, yum. I can't wait to taste the wine that's made from these grapes. Several different grape varieties grow at Mountain View. Some are chosen because they withstand the weather in the Pocono region. Noiré is our uh, most recent plantings over the last few years, and Noiré has the characteristics of a Shiraz. Um, Cornell and the University of Minnesota continue to develop new grape varieties that will withstand our cl colder climates and uh, be resistant to diseases that we might be more susceptible to in the Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> Time for wine. <laughs> Well, not exactly time for wine yet. These grapes need to be mashed. So right now you're looking down into a batch, a small experimental batch of um, Marquettes actually. And um, um, what we're doing is we're just going to try to um, macerate all the flavors from the skins, the color from the skins, the tannins that are in the skins. We're trying to get all the, the chemical compounds that everybody loves about wine. We're trying to get them out of the skins and even a little bit in the, uh, there's a little bit of stems in there that will actually help with the tannin composition to make a little fuller bodied, well structured, um, nice dark beautiful grape wine. So we'll just keep stirring it around a little bit and then we want to push it down because we're going to try to get all the sugars and the flavor out of the grapes. Of course that's going to help us ferment it dry so that we get a, a real nice, um, hopefully what we're hoping for for this batch is a a real nice full-bodied red that's going to be done in a, a dry to semi-dry style. This is a good workout. <laughs> Marie, it's your turn. <laughs> How many days do we have to do this? <laughs> no gym membership for you guys. Just come here regularly. We'll keep you busy. Smush the grapes. No, no, it might not be a bad trade-off if we get bottles of wine. <laughs> From picking the grapes to the time it winds up in a bottle and ready to be sold? Oh, a couple years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the time that um, we press them out, then we'll put them into bulk storage and we'll rack them. We'll move them from one container to another container every six weeks to clarify them naturally. Um, we don't use chemicals, so we won't use bentonite. Um, we just allow nature to take its place. And um, when, the, uh, when the wine is clear, then 
Then I give it to my wife, I give her a sample, and <laughs> she either gives me the go ahead or she says, nope, put her back in, and, uh, and we wait. We eventually got Linda's approval and it was time to taste. Cheers. You will take a little sip of the wine first so that you know what it tastes like on its own. Then you're gonna have a bite of the food that I pair it with, and then you're gonna have another sip mm -hmm. so that you know what it tastes like on its own, and then how much food can affect the flavor. Uh, Euphoria is our semi-dry white that is made from the Traminette grape, which is a hybrid of Gewürztraminer. Mm -hmm. Has some little notes of spice to it that most people don't pick up on when they sip it on its own. On its own, it tastes in between a Riesling and a Pinot Grigio. But if you pair it with a spicy dish, it makes a little bit of spice pop from the wine. Mm. So this one will be paired with a sweet and spicy red pepper hummus. Goes very nicely with Indian or Thai or Mexican food. Shrimp cocktail with a horseradish, mm -hmm. crab cakes. Mm -hmm. So you Is there a proper a way to sip wine? I don't think there's any improper way to sip that <laughs> wine. <laughs> okay. nice. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. So now you're going to put a little bit of the hummus on your cracker. I'm just going to eat this so and you're then take, take another yep. sip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, you get a different flavor. Your Thank whole you. mouth comes alive then. It does. Yeah. It does. That's one of our most popular. Mm. That was good. Well, I like Euphoria. <laughs> after like the name after too. a glass or two, you'll be in a state of euphoria. <laughs> so now we're going to try, uh, we're going to sample Split Rail Red. Mm -hmm. And we consider this our signature wine because it's where we got our start, our very first planting on the Split Rail fence. Uh, this is a blend of four grapes that we grow here. It's the Chamberson, the top red grape in this region, blended with Frontenac and Foch and Cynthiana, that's the fourth grape, which is native to the Virginia region that we also grow here. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the growing season, if it's a hot, dry summer, the Cynthiana grape will have a little hint of black pepper to the finish. I pair this with an applewood smoked cheddar that brings out the little bit of pepperiness. I feel like I need to swirl. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oaked wines, you definitely are going to swirl some more. It's very nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's a nice medium, nice mm -hmm. medium wine. As you drink more wine, I think you go more toward the heavier, darker ones. Yes. And then those people who are just starting, this is a good one to just start, or you're probably Mountain Goat Red. Mountain is Goat Red is where most start. Yeah, That's um, made from 100% Concord grapes. Very it's sweet. The <laughs> sweetest of our wines. And uh, actually, it's the sweetness level is twice that of Split Rail Red. Split mm -hmm. Rail Red has about 3.5% residual sugar and Mountain Goat Red has seven. Mm -hmm. um, and folks' tastes change over time, too. I, when we first started out, we liked our wines a bit sweeter, mm -hmm. and now this is too sweet for me. Mm -hmm. So what I do is, because I am the winery owner, I will <laughs> blend, I make my own custom blends. I will take- Linda's blend. Linda's blend, I'll take Split Rail Red, maybe half of a glass of Split Rail Red because I love the flavors of the four grapes together. And then I will um, tone down the sweetness by blending passion in it. Mm -hmm. Passion has no sugar, zero yeah. residual sugar. So yep. So that's my own blend. And it is an acquired <laughs> taste, that, as you said, the, mm -hmm. more you, the more you sample and drink wine, the heavier you seem to go. Right, so we have something for everyone, I think. At yeah. this point. yeah, it's great. And I like your sparkling wines. Are they real popular during the holidays? They are, but we tell people sparkling wine is not just for holidays. I agree. <laughs> it's to celebrate <laughs> anything. anything. We really enjoyed our visit to Mountain View Vineyard and Winery. The vineyard is beautiful and the wine delicious. You can stop by their tasting room any weekend and also on Thursdays and Fridays throughout October. And if you go to our Facebook page, like the correct photo in our October album and share your favorite toast, you could win a gift certificate to the winery. And next month on Talk of the Town, we will take you inside the brand new distillery at Mountain View and we're going to share some good old moonshine. Moonshine. <laughs> Up next, a fall favorite, fun at a corn maze.
Welcome back to Talk of the Town, everyone. We're at Bear Rock Junction on Route 309 in Neutropoli, and it's time to get lost. This time of year is great for corn mazes, so come on, let's check one out. Actually, it started off as an idea for improving the local farm economy and, of course, trying to improve yourself. And it turned out to be a really neat place that people get out to the outdoors. They have a good time, fresh air. Bear Rock Junction started creating their corn mazes in the year 2000. There have been many ideas since then, and they need a new idea every year. For the last few years, John's daughter, Rosie, has come up with the concept and done the artwork. It's pretty much like a cow's, and then there's like a UFO up in the sky where the one cow's getting sucked up by the UFO, and there's like a barn in the background. So. And what did your dad say when you first came up with that idea? Uh, he kind of laughed at it and thought that was, that was pretty good. I thought it turned out pretty good. We were just kind of brainstorming at first. I wasn't too sure how it would turn out. But then once I actually started drawing it, I looked pictures up online, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. We can do that. The maze is cut into an eight and a half acre cornfield using a GPS system. There are almost four miles of paths. But there are six checkpoints in each maze for a total of 12. At each checkpoint will be a map of the maze. It shows you where you are and where you've been and where you need to go. You can take a nice stroll during the day or conquer the maze by flashlight at night. Does anybody get really lost in here? You have to save them? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good thing. But if you ask that question before your trip into the maze, they may tell you there once was a guy who got lost, but they found him eventually. You will not get eternally lost here. You can call out and somebody's probably going to answer. Somebody will find you. Yeah. <laughs> Marie, these corn stalks are like twice as tall as you. Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Our first left choice, or right. left or right. Left or right? Mm, left. Left. Hmm. I think the one was way back in the corner, but I wonder if that's a trick. Yeah. Wow. Just a couple. Oh, paths. yeah. Oh, does this connect? I don't All know. Right, Let's go. see. I'll go this way. <laughs> Are you over there? Yeah. <laughs> it connected. All right. No checkpoint there. Ta-da! Okay, one down. One down. What we gotta find is that little shoo. Yeah, there's only or one way this, to get. Or here. Is that a left? That's Go a to left. the left. Might be looping back around. It might, but yeah, yeah I think it did. <laughs> it might be like the cow's ear. <laughs> I don't know, it could nope, be another think... loop. <laughs> that way? Oh! <laughs> we almost missed it. I say we just wander. What do you say? Yeah, let's see where we wind up. Hmm. Hmm. I think we were here before. Did okay. we come from that way? I don't remember. Where'd you go? Yeah, you found us. <laughs> you found us. Don't get lost. We might hit four before we hit three. Finding the first two is easy. <laughs> I think, is this a little circle? Ah, found one! Yay! It's five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that was what we were looking for at all. <laughs> there it there is. There it is. Success. We haven't gotten lost for too long. <laughs> okay. Right. Zach, lead us back. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Right. We found our way out. <laughs> Success. And we've got all Yay. six check marks. <laughs> Wait, Good. we have to go back. I missed number one. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it could be a whole day affair. We have apple launching where we shoot big slingshots at targets out in the field. We have the cattle. We're gonna try pumpkin bowling this year. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. We also have a hay ride that takes about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, goats and cows and things like that. We do have campfires. 
Eddie could do s'mores kits, cook your own hot dogs, whatever you want to do. Then up there we have a tube slide, a pick your own pumpkin patch, and a super trike track for the little guys, okay? And that actually goes through the cornfield. Finding a needle in a haystack, huh? Quite a challenge, quite a challenge. I have a feeling most of the people that do this are a lot smaller than us. <laughs> and maybe a lot luckier too. Making our way out of that corn maze was quite an adventure. That's right, and when you get out, you can treat yourself to a reward. <laughs> We had an adventurous time at Bear Rock Junction, and you can too. We have three family four packs for the corn maze. We're going to give these away early in the month. So find the proper photo in our October album and tell us your favorite thing about corn mazes for your chance to win a free day out. And don't go away. We head to a bakery that makes delicious treats every day. And of course, we're gonna help. of beautiful fall foliage, apples, pumpkins. And even pretzels. Pretzels? Of course, it's National Pretzel Month. It is? What a twist. <laughs> so we found a great place that makes fresh baked pretzels every day. Callie's Pretzel Factory opened 28 years ago. It was a spin-off of Callie's Candy Kitchen, just a few miles down Route 390 in Mountain Home. Hi, Mark. Hello, good Hi, morning, Mark. ladies. Nice good morning, you. Good morning, Kim. Uh, I understand you're here today to learn a little bit about pretzel making, and Absolutely. I'm supposed to try to teach you. We know you're the expert. Okay, yeah. make, expert. Them, make them and eat them. That's right. Oh, we get to eat them here too. So. <laughs> Kim and I got washed up, and we're just putting on our aprons when the big boss arrived to supervise the candy man himself, Mr. Harry Kelly. Harry, we are here to make pretzels today. What do you think about that? I think it's a good idea. I'm going to eat one. <laughs> are you going to eat one that we make? Awesome. I'll take a chance. <laughs> the dough itself, very simple recipe. Six ingredients. Flour, yeast, shortening, salt, malt, and water. The water toss goes that. first? Yep, water. We always put the water in first. It's the biggest mixing bowl. <laughs> I don't we, have one quite this big in my we kitchen. We make pretty large batches here. Okay. And this? That the whole thing, if you think you can do it, we'll dump that oh, right in there. And everything is in here <laughs> already. Right, the mall oh, and the nice. yeast and everything is so in you, there. Yeah? So you planned so, for us. That's correct, yeah. So it all gets dumped in there. Want to set 15 minutes on there? 15 minutes. Perfect. Big black button will start. Okay. All right, and it's no, and it doesn't go too high, so you poof it all. That's right. It's, it's a slow, perfect. it's a slow mix. It'll be mixing for about 15 minutes at that low speed. Nice. And that will form our ball of dough. So now this is our batch of dough that's been allowed to set for a while. It's been allowed to raise. This actually is about doubled in size of when it came out of the mixer. We cut a large chunk of dough and we put on our scale. Look at that, I got that right. I was going to say, <laughs> you know what you're doing. Good. So with and, practice, now that will go in that tin there. And basically you want to make it fit the tin. And this makes it pretty easy to take that one large piece of dough and divide it up into 36 equal smaller pieces. Push I'm down. glad you did that yeah, part. That <laughs> press. Okay, so now we've got our pieces the correct size. We brought them over to this other piece of equipment that we have. And what I'm going to do, i turn this on. We're going to take these little balls of dough and drop them into the roll. There it goes. And yeah, by rolling it into a little start like that, that it gets helps it to go. It go down <laughs> I was juggling down. mine. <laughs> down it go, goes. Go, go. Last one. One last one. <laughs> That's number 36. Uh, we've been doing this 28 years. I've never met anybody that I can't teach to do it. So if, <laughs> if you guys can't, you're the first that haven't been able to, to do it. I think so. we can do it. I think we can do it. <laughs> yeah, the pressure's on you now. So yeah. you gotta. So we're going to pick the dough up. Mm -hmm. We're going to give it a flip. Make a pretzel. Pick right. it up. We're going to give it a flip. 
Make a pretzel. Pick it up, give it a flip, make a pretzel. <laughs> I, th I have a feeling yeah, every, you just... <laughs> everybody's amazed at that. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not as hard as it looks, the but there, there is a knack to it. Yes. I'm... Let's start by holding the dough up. Yes. Try giving that dough just a little bit of a spin. Make like a little loop and spin it in the air. So that's the motion we're looking for. Okay. Now the next trick is to give it that spin, but then let it land on the table to stop it from spinning. Perfect, perfect. Woo! Okay. Yep, she got uh, it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, we're just, just gonna straighten that up a little bit there. Okay. Now to finish it off, mm -hmm. yeah, you're jumping ahead here. We're gonna bring those ends. I know across. what a rental looks like. That's, I recognize yeah. it. That's yeah. an ugly one. There you go. No, there's yeah. no such thing as an ugly one. It's a unique one. It's a unique, unique one. one. I'm going to give it that little flip. Mm. <laughs> right. Twirl. Remember that, little, again. that again. little loop that you want. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to bring it over the top. You got it. I so, got it, though. So you got that. Mine did a double twirl. And then twirl. we're going to bring the ends over. Years ago, we decided to take some of that dough and shape it up into Money. a little dollar sign. <laughs> once we made go. that, we had to think of a name for it, so we thought about it a little bit. We decided to call that pretzel dough. <laughs> oh, nice. Now, I you, have you one for make... Zach. Zach, the camera guy. <laughs> a musical right. note. There you go. Yep. Travel clip. Yeah. Yum. Can't wait to eat them. The bakery is located on the back of the building and there's glass windows that enclose it and they certainly can watch the process of the pretzels being formed and then going down the conveyors and all that. There's always free samples here, of course, too. And, and this machine is what has the hot water bath or waterfall in it. And that, the job of that water bath is to get this dough nice and wet so that when we do go to put flavors on, the flavors will stick to it. So now they're going to head into an oven, which is set for 700 degrees temperature. Wow! You're baking so at a you're baking high, at a high, high temperature. That helps get that nice brown color on the pretzels. Kelly's Pretzel Factory uses that same dough to make over 100 kinds of pretzels. <laughs> With that many choices, it makes it tough to pick a favorite. But not for Harry Kelly. Do you have a favorite pretzel to eat? The problem is the salt. Just yes, plain better, salted pretzel. Better, better salt. Crunchy or soft? Soft. Making pretzels is fun, but I think the most fun is getting Eating to eat them. those pretzels. <laughs> Best part of the day. <laughs> so let's all pick a snack here to have, whatever you would like. I'll let Everything you choose pretzel. first, and huh? I think I'm going for a pretzel pop. You like it? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going for. You like for. the pretzel pop? And everything <laughs> not. All right, let's eat. We got our snacks. Harry, how does everything look? Did look, we do a good job? Oh, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> but the real test is to yeah, taste you have it, to, right? The taste you have test. You better check them out. <laughs> mm. Yum. Yum. Very good. Good? They passed the test. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> We'd like you to see pretzels being made and, of course, sample some of the delicious treats. So get on Facebook, find the proper photo in our October album, and tell us what your pretzel creation would be for a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to Callie's Pretzel Factory. Good luck. Coming up next, do you need a break from your busy life? Yes. We all do sometimes. <laughs> Wait till you see what we do next for a breath of fresh air. Have you ever just been fed up with everything and you announced to everyone, I am going to run away and join the circus? <laughs> <laughs> I never have, but it really does sound like a good idea. Well, do you know that you don't have to run away? You can stay home and join the circus. Well, then by all means, let's do it. <laughs> Danny, we're here to join the circus. Hi, Danny. <laughs> The Eclectic Circus is a group of about 12 people with many very unique talents. They're available for hire and are sure to make your event a memorable one. So who are these people? Are they, do they have other lives or are they just 100% circus? <laughs> None of us are 100% circus, although that's what I'm trying for. But for the most part, everybody has a day job. 
and this is their hobby. Eclectic is a really good word for this group because our talents range a lot of different things. Okay, Danny, what are we gonna do first? All right, let's play. Let's acro play. Okay, come on okay. over. So in acro yoga, we always make sure to talk to each other. So I'll say like, Danny, is that okay? That's good. Still feel good? Yep. All right, I'm up. All good. I'll go on the bottom first if you want. I know that you're worried about the upper body strength. <laughs> yeah, and my lack of it. I'm also worried about my legs hitting the ceiling here. Okay, okay. so far so good. So far so good. <laughs> this might be your talent. Yeah. Yeah. Start, placing, <laughs> start placing more weight back onto her, onto her legs. Okay. And start coming up onto your toes. Okay. And you can feel them slowly floating up. Ready, Ree? Yeah. There we are. Woo. I gotcha. And I'm, I'm not even touching. <laughs> We're swaying a little bit. Yeah. Swaying. Yeah. Got it. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> right. legs are so long. Okay, so I'll stick get my up there. legs. I'll keep my legs a little bent. There you go. Now you can start straightening your legs. Go straighten them out. Very good. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Very good. We're doing pretty well so far. <laughs> yeah, so far so good. Ready for you. Which one going? of us? Go ahead, we gotta both try it, you know that. Oh my god, I'm too tall for you two. You got it. Danny supported a 200 pound man, so. <laughs> she can so she her. got you, Kim, she got you. Come on, Marie, you, no. You, you wanna make it a quadruple decker. <laughs> <laughs> Except I need a ladder. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> You're strong, you I see are the, strong. I see the shaking though, it's like a challenge. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah! Yay! So what are we doing next? Next test is hoop tossing. Hoop tossing. Hoop tossing. Ooh, right. doesn't sound too tough. Back toss. And keep going. If it drops, keep, away. Keep, if it drops, just keep going and smiling. I was going to run through, but I had to travel through, like, tossing <laughs> hoops and putting my front in a hand. Back, toss. Very good. Woohoo! Yay, we can join the circus, right? Oh! <laughs> Very good. Only a few fumbles. Good job. <laughs> oh! <laughs> good job. I thought it was good while it <laughs> Ninja hooping. <Woo>! Yeah. <laughs> and you can also put two hands in. Okay. There you go. There you go. Ninja hooping. There you go. You got it. Very yeah. good job. <laughs> they call this hoop the chainsaw. It's not for the faint of heart. Here we go. Yay! See, heavy. Help. <laughs> I'm tossing them. That's a real chain. <laughs> that was a lot of wiggle. <laughs> we love we the love circus. The circus. Now, if I could have my littlest circus member, Zen, show us the trampoline, we can go to the next part. I can't get up. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Whoa. Do we have to do that with a hula hoop on, Danny? That's it! Woo! Woo! <laughs> See that turning? Yeah, it was going. Jump through thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the bottom, you have to really time it. Oh. Yes, you do. <laughs> the pose makes it all better. <laughs> Let's try something a little more daring. Okay. A little more dark. Joining the circus, you know, you have to learn all sorts of things. One of the things, you know, 
you can't quite pick up some of the skills right away. But what you can do is start performing as lovely assistants. Okay. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> right now we have the tongue. Did that hurt? Define hurt. <laughs> you build up a certain he level of tolerance when you do strange things on a regular basis. Like this, that's a nail. Yes, it's a regular old nail. It's a real nail. You can I don't see even it's want not to a know gap. What you're gonna do with it's a not nail. a fake nail. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> it's a hammer. It's a little tiny pocket hammer. Works as pliers too, which is nice, but we'll get to that. <laughs> because we're gonna take this hammer and I'm gonna pound it right into the middle of my head. Sounds like a wonderful idea. So middle of the head, right? Right about there. That's the middle left, right? Okay. All right, yeah. top down. Got to get the middle top down too. So that's mm. right about here. That was three inches <laughs> of regular framing nail right into the center of my head. Gonna pull it out? No! All right, well that's where the pliers come in. <laughs> I don't even think I can move! <laughs> it's a good thing you don't have a cold. We're not if trying this If I did, this I'd part, be able right? to breathe quite better afterwards. All right, now there's a series of straps down the back. Do we put it on the tightest one? Yep, go ahead, just get them nice and tight. Okay. Now I notice there's one more buckle down there. There's yes. another strap right there. This yep. one? Yep, that one. There we go. Now this one, you're going to have to pull pretty tight. All right, I don't want to hurt you. It's okay. Go ahead and just pull it If you nice start speaking in another <laughs> octave, <laughs> Marie, <Yes>. you're hurting <laughs> him. <laughs> Got it. A little tight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, now another way that some people will fake this trick is what's called a gaff jacket. So you always want to check someone if you're putting them into a straight jacket to make sure it's not a fake jacket. This because strap we do right it so here, many times. <laughs> they only make these right. jackets in standard sizes. And unfortunately that does not include you're extra not... tall for people like me. Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh, wait, okay. All right, we're Got good. It. So you could have a jacket that would fit my arms and be very loose other places. <laughs> or a jacket that's very tight in certain places and fits otherwise. Now what? All right. Now, the way to get out of a straitjacket is to dislocate the shoulder. Uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like, don't you want to learn this no, next? No, no, no. Don't you think the person telling you this is a little crazy? Yes. <laughs> That's why he's in a straitjacket. All right. And of course, the most important one. <laughs> <sighs> Suddenly, I can breathe a little better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's making it look a lot easier than it really is. I can't even imagine like the um, wow. dislocating the shoulder part. <sighs> Ooh. Is that good for you? <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> I'm not sure that anything involving wild. sideshow is good Probably for you. Probably not. Don't try it at home. That yeah. part, just leave alone. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Yes, thank you. And I guess you. up next, we're going to be trying you out on some stilts. Okay. All right. Sounds good. With all this childishness, it's time to grow up. Are we ready? Almost. I'm right. taller than you. Grab my shoulder. <laughs> okay. We're going to go right over here to one of these poles. All right, we need to go slow. Yep. <laughs> I'm just following the speed you're going. Now, remember. On the weight, heels. Right on the heels. I got gotcha. you. On the heels. On the heels. <laughs> little steps. Little, little steps. steps. Looking like Bambi on ice. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Nice. Walk over to this pole. Another one to grab. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Look, Marie, you're tall. I'm tall. Woo! <laughs> For the first time ever. <laughs> Woo! You. You done. Try to do it with style. That was Woo! good. That was good. I like the attitude in that. <laughs> 
can, I told you, I can walk in any shoes, even these. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty strong. He's our strong man. We're Yay! doing it! We're on stilts! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Don't go away. More from the Eclectic Circus next. What are you Ooh, doing? How do we so do cool. that? He looks this, like magic. This is a levitation wand. Oh, well, can you teach us how to do it? I can. And then if you use your other hand, you'd want to make the circle following the wand. Because then it's out of control! <laughs> you don't see this part. This is the this is the magic Shh, part. This is the secret part. It might be easier to walk on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're pushing it back and forth. Ooh, that's impressive. You don't see this little black thing holding it onto my finger, do you? <laughs> there you go. You Am I that? magic or just yeah, crazy? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Magic! Whoa, whoa! It is Are magic. You? Wow, that was so much fun. I wonder what's next. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you guys? Excellent. Are you having fun with the circus? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Are we going to belly dance here? Just a little bit. And lift, drop. I know you guys have done this before. <laughs> we took that one class. Right? Yeah. It was a while ago. <laughs> All right. Great. So maybe one more. How do you guys feel? Yeah. We're, we'll try anything. All right. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Now try again. I'm going left, left this time. Uh -huh. Yeah. I feel my sword going. <laughs> 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 I think I would have grabbed that for Sharpie. Walk, walk, walk. Ta-da! Woo! <laughs> 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 when it starts to go, I'm just getting out of my way. <laughs> I don't know. We did practice with books on our head one day, Marie. Yes, we did. <laughs> That very was, good, that was the very good. Pretty hands. There you go. go. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Woo <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready for the circus, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a little bit more of the graceful part. <laughs> right legs again, up and out. <laughs> We're so flexible! <laughs> Reveal! <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da! Are you looking for people to run away and join the circus and join you? We are always welcome to people coming and playing with us, especially for the parades. It looks like it'd be pretty strong. Uh, yes, upper body strength is definitely a plus. It'll get you, it'll make it a little bit easier, but there are some tricks that I could teach you to make it a little easier to get up there. Okay, okay. cool. So I'm gonna start you off with the basic climb. Okay. Now a basic climb is you gather the, the silks together and you wrap to the inner thigh, around the back of the ankle, and back to the top of the foot. Then you're gonna use your upper body strength to pull up as you hop with this leg and bring this foot up to stand on top of the other foot. Great. Pull yourself up, rewrap, pinch. That's it, great. Now, you never wanna go so far that you run out of strength. So okay. pay attention to your body and make sure you're not overdoing it. You're not going too far that you can't come back down. You wanna exhaust it. Definitely yourself. wanna be able to come back down. Yes. <laughs> that was a good climb. Pull yourself up. Pinch it. That's it. And then stand up with your legs. Stand up nice and tall. Push up. Pull yourself up. Bring your legs up nice and far. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as I'm going to get. <laughs> Very good. Try back bending. Ta da! That's it. <laughs> One leg up. <laughs> There, that's I it. don't right feel there. nearly right. as graceful right as Pull you. Back. You can also try bending these both knees. 
angling the elbows, you get these great right angles and make for an interesting shot, an interesting shape. There you are. Oh, she's going right into splits. Go ahead. Right angle, right angle. And bend very the elbows. Nice, very nice. Bend the, there you go. So lunge. Go the lunge. Lunge first. Whoa. Find that balance. <laughs> lunge. Okay, then the right angle thing. Put your head back so that you look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm swinging. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I'll just hang out here for a while. <laughs> this may be the best workout I've ever had. <laughs> a day with the circus. You kick back. Without kicking you in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. Wow. wow. <laughs> I can't see how close I'm getting to your face. You're good. <laughs> and come down. Very good. Whoa. Good. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> you guys did a lot and you did amazing. Do you think we can join the circus? Absolutely. <laughs> what do you guys think? Can they join the circus? Woo! <laughs> I think I'm ready for the circus. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Zach, now it's your turn. Baby steps, baby steps. Would you say it's easier than water skiing? Yeah. <laughs> However, if I fall, I don't think the ground will be quite as soft. No, not quite water. No. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for joining the Eclectic Circus. It was really fun and challenging to join the circus. I felt some of those tricks the next day and even the day after that. <laughs> Me too. The Eclectic Circus is ready and willing to show up anywhere that you'd like a little bit of circus. Well, if you would like to book them for your event or if you want to join them, you can find them on Facebook. Coming up, we're at Quiet Valley Farm. Don't turn the channel. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, everyone. We're at Quiet Valley Living Historical Farm, where they're celebrating their 50th anniversary. Kim, did you know that in the 1800s, this is how we had to get our water? Well, it sure <laughs> takes a while. I know. I'm really <laughs> glad that today we don't have to work so hard for a glass of water. <laughs> but just being here really takes me back in time. Yeah, but you know what? We really don't fit in. <laughs> Now we do. October is all about the harvest. And they're gonna put us to work today. That's right, Farmer Milt, I hear that you, hi, how are you? Hi, hey, good girls. to see you. Good to see you. I hear you're gonna teach us how to get the corn ready for the animals. Yes, we are. Right. Now back earlier, we used to have to take it like this and take it off with our thumb. Ooh, that would hurt your thumb that after a while. Hurt. Yeah, after a while, but for now sure. now we got a new machine here, it's called a corn sheller. Technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how it's work and then you can do it. We're going to okay. crank this up like this. Corn goes in the top, the top come out the front, and show yeah. the corn that we're back in the bottom. So I'll feed wow. it in, and you just do your crank. All right, you're going to fill that bucket up. This takes some muscle. <laughs> now we got to make the kernel small enough to feed the animals. We have a corn cracker machine for that. OK. Now, Here's where our seeds are. We're going to put the seeds in the top, and we're going to just crank this and crank it and crank it. Uh -huh. And then it cranks it up. So, <laughs> this is more technology, huh? Look at that. Yeah. Look how small it is. OK, it's your turn. Let's Perfect go. Perfect for the we animals, animals to eat. To All, right. All right. All right. So we say, Jimmy Crack Corn, and I don't care. <laughs> Jimmy Crack Corn, and I don't care. Because the machine's yeah, the doing machine's, a lot of work. Yeah, the machine's doing most of the work. Still need a good cranking arm, though. casual break here. Belle <laughs> Marie's doing all the work. It's a little warm today. 
We can pitch some hay if you want to pitch some hay, too. <laughs> All right, if we're supposed to pitch hay, we can pitch hay. Okay, Kim, why Marie's cracking the corn, let's pitch some hay. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Come on, fill the fork up. Be here all day. I did pretty good that time. There you go. That's your fork. Good hey, girls, let's come down here. We got Pepper. Oh, and, and some Pepper. babies. Hi, little twin girls she had about six weeks ago. Oh. Hi, Pepper. Hey, oh, Pepper. can I hold one? Sure. Do the babies have a name? No, not yet. Come on, Pepper. So you have lots of animals oh, here Pepper. at the farm. Yes, we do. We got two nice, strong Clydesdale working horses. We got a mule, we got cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, ducks, turkeys. A lot of work. A lot of work. We need a lot of crack corn. <laughs> a lot corn. of crack corn. Yes, we do. <laughs> Here, Pepper. Oh, well, Pepper likes that, huh? <laughs> no, wait, I want to give some to the baby. Oh. We're going to call you Nibble. <laughs> mm. oh, those chores were making me hungry. Me too. Time now for some food. Debbie D. Pascal is the Marketing and Special Events Director here at Quiet Valley. And thank you for having us out. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to have you. Today, though, bread and butter, right? <laughs> the teacher? <laughs> Today, I will teach you in some of the basics of the farm, which is bread making and butter making. Everybody loves bread and butter, Absolutely. don't they? Absolutely. Yum, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started. Okay. A little bit of flour, and then we're going to empty the bowl of the bread out onto the flour. It smells delicious. And then you can knead it using pressing down with the heel of your hand, fold it over, and press it again. And you just do that for a little while till you incorporate more of the flour into it. I'm going to just slip down here because uh, what goes better with bread than butter? Nothing. And <laughs> yeah, there is nothing <laughs> better really. than bread and butter. And when you yeah. have cows on the farm and they give you milk, mm -hmm. 17 quarts in the morning, 17 quarts at the end of the day, wow. that's 34 <laughs> quarts of milk a day, and you're going to get a lot of cream from that milk. So you gotta do something with it. So Absolutely. You're, gonna, you're gonna make it into butter. Now, we have two types here. This is a small version of the old fashioned butter churn. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, that was time consuming. Good job for young children. <laughs> Especially if they've been uh, not staying on top of their chores. Get them, how you long, try that. How long would it take to actually in, make butter? In a butter? large yeah. churn, because there's a lot in there, it, it would take you oh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour if you stuck wow. with it. Yeah. Right. Now, eventually they invented the Lazy Daisy, we call this one. <laughs> Because well, that's it, what because I'm you're thinking so lazy. Oh, you know, Milton's technology in the barn, it's the same idea. Technology. Hand here. Simple enough, right? And you just <laughs> keep on going. This one could be 20 minutes to 30 minutes to yes, have it butter. On how fast you're going, right? Yep, and slow and steady. And what you're, what you're doing is... Uh, Breaking. Too fast? Oh no, no, Good. I don't. Oh no, don't worry about that. <laughs> no. Is this bread yet? Oh, let's see. <laughs> I'll show you the secret. The secret. Now, when you needed it, when you press it down, see it's coming up a little bit, but I would just do it a little bit more. Of course, that's not true. I just wanted to. Do it. <laughs> Let's see your work a little bit more. <laughs> it's nice to have some help with this task. You know, the bake oven runs every Saturday in the summertime, so folks actually can come out and see this. And of course, at our harvest festival in October here. Mm -hmm. Does this it's look like butter yet? It. Oh, no. I'm sorry, dear. You gotta <laughs> wait. You gotta to keep go. on going. You probably have to go Certainly. home soon, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I. Well, why don't you take a break and we'll just try a little piece of bread that I happen to already have that's done. That How's good. that? And that's I have some butter wonderful. that's already made. Mm, I hope that's not too much delicious. butter for you. You're not lactose intolerant, are <laughs> you? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Is there such it. thing as too much butter? <laughs> no, actually, sometimes I think bread is just a vehicle to get more <laughs> butter in your mouth. I think actually, you're right. You know. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yes, my. thank you. Mm. Maybe I'll have a piece, too. Mm -hmm. mm, it's very good. Very good. October is kind of spooky. It sure is. And here at the farm, Cheryl Statham is the Director of Education and Programming, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about the scarier side of things. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the last two Saturdays in October, we are going to be open for our spooky days on the farm. From It runs from 1 to 8. 
from one to five, it'll be more family friendly. We'll be having wagon rides through the woods and someone will be on the wagon to tell not so scary stories. <laughs> we'll also have a hay bale maze. There'll be a pumpkin carving area and we'll have snacks for the kids. From five to eight, we get a little darker and a little spookier. <laughs> We're going to have a murder mystery here on the farm. Aunt Marcia is dead in the kitchen. Oh no, uh, who done it? Well, that's what you have to figure out. Yes. <laughs> Who did it? How did they do it? And why did they do it? And so that's one of the things you'll find out if you if you come and try and solve our mystery. Mm -hmm. Also, you can take a walk through the woods with the ghost of Leah Meyer, who will take you out to visit the Hag of the Woods. Mm -hmm. And she will be out there to tell you definitely scarier stories. <laughs> and then another ghost will bring you back onto the farm again. We'll also be having some other surprise activities happening mm. that day, so we don't want to give it all away, <laughs> but we do encourage people to come out to the farm after Harvest Festival and find out about spooky days here on the farm. And part spooky of it's going to be carving pumpkins or carving, decorating pumpkins? Decorating pumpkins. We'll have a whole host of things you can do. Either you can either decorate your pumpkin, like my mummy here, or we'll have some That's... knives and spoons and stuff if you'd rather decorate your, if you'd rather actually do a jack-o-lantern and carve it. All right, mm -hmm. so we're making a mummy here, trying. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as yours. <laughs> but you just Need take some some fabric and tie it around, right? Yes, that's all you need to do. And then some nice googly <laughs> eyes. <laughs> looks good to me. He either looks like a mummy or maybe that he was injured. <laughs> <laughs> either way, I think that'd look nice on your doorstep but when the trick-or-treaters come to visit. Absolutely, it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Cheryl. You can enjoy a step back in time this month at Quiet Valley. The Harvest Festival is set for October 12th and 13th, and there are two spooky days on the farm, October 19th and the 26th. Visit our Facebook page and check out all the photos in the October album. And let us know what is your favorite modern technology for a chance to win a four pack of tickets to the old time Christmas celebration in December at Quiet Valley. This is our 28th year for Old Time Christmas, as we call it. It happens in the late afternoon into the evening, so the farm gets dark. We have uh, lights along the pathways to help people see. They will stop in the different buildings, learn some Christmas customs, and finish the tour with a nice hot cider or a hot chocolate and some fresh cookies, but it's a particularly nice time of the year to really reflect on the harvest, on the bounties of the farm throughout the year. Whatever you do, be the talk of the town! Okay, what did Marie do? Marie did the back bend thing? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> stay there, stay there. You found it. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, you can ro roll right back down and out. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>